So you're an Iraqi American who grew up in Tennessee <laughs> and you faced a lot of bullying, which is how you actually got into makeup in the first place. And now you're one of the wealthiest self-made women in the world with a net worth of over 500 million. Your brand is over, worth over a billion dollars, but you are you know, in cosmetics. That's not new, that's actually quite old. How did you break through the noise and build your brand in such an established industry? Well, thank you for all of that. <laughs> um, it's funny because when you're saying all those things on the outside, I feel like it seems like I have all my things together, but in the inside, it never feels like that. Um, you know, I think one of the things that helped me break through the noise and for anybody out there who's a young entrepreneur, um, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do right away. And the thing that I was, I was very passionate about was beauty. Um, at that time, blogging was very new and it was all about fashion bloggers. And when I was starting, everybody was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you talking about beauty? Nobody does that. Everybody talks about fashion. Like we take photos, we post them online. Why are you posting about beauty? You're gonna be out of a job. You're a makeup artist, you're gonna be out of a job. And um, it was funny because I, I didn't know exactly where I was going to go, but I, I kind of identified some gaps. And then I identified like, you know, if I look at the gap and I look at like within the gap, how can I create like micro gaps and have a little bit of a focus? And for me at the time it was, you know, I was a makeup artist, I was loving lashes and I saw an opportunity to create, you know, a brand around that. And then, um, you know, I think that's, that's a, a huge opportunity for people out there. It's like, you know, what is the gap and how can I fill it and be really passionate about it and, um, you know, and kind of make a plan around that. And that's, that's kind of what I did. I just focused on gaps. Right, and content is such a big part of what you do. And now you've got over 50 million followers. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but something I find really interesting about the content that you post is a lot of it is not actually you. A lot of it is user generated. Can you talk a little bit about why you've decided to pursue that path um, yeah. in content? It's funny because I say that a lot, right? I'm like, it's funny, everything's funny. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why we decided to do that was um, it's not about me and it shouldn't always be about me and what my perception of beauty is. Beauty is something that each and every single one of us have and we articulate that and it means something to us. So, um, you know, I kind of bounced around. Do I kind of, you know, make the content from my perspective or do I share what everything, you know, everybody is doing that is interesting and what we ended up settling on, which I think was really important for our brand to make it something that was a little bit more democratized, something that was for everyone. And so we decided to use user generated content for that reason. It's um, when we first launched the blog, it was hoodabeauty.com where beauty is shared. You know, and it wasn't about my perception of beauty. It wasn't about any single perception. It was about all beauty being shared. And, um, and that's something that I think we've held true, you know, and user-generated content is one way that we do that. And also, we get to support people. Right, of course. And so speaking of beauty, something that I think is really interesting about you is you've been pretty open about the use of Photoshop. So in the fall, you posted a photo to your audience, and I'm going to read the caption. You said... It's difficult when I choose not to edit because I'm called fat, and if I choose to edit, I'm called fake. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the role of authenticity because, you know, your signature is makeup, which is kind of a form of editing, mm -hmm. and when you bring Photoshop into the fold, do you think that's sort of a dishonest marketing because you're selling an aesthetic? It's, um, it's complicated, right? And beauty for all of us is complicated. It's like a representation of who we are, and it is so complicated. You know, I, I mean, I do Botox and fillers. That's a form of editing. I mean, my doctor is here, Dr. Rudda. <laughs> Very strong woman here. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's definitely, like, different forms that we edit. And I remember at one point feeling trapped because here I was, I was like, you know, I, I felt cute, started doing makeup, you know, post my pictures online, got some criticism, and sometimes reacted to that, like, by doing things, and sometimes it was about me representing who I was. Maybe I didn't take care of myself, so I was helping myself, you know, in different ways. But it got to the point where I felt trapped. I was like, it's never enough. There's always somebody with an opinion. There's always something where I just can't feel like myself. And I felt like I wanted to break free from that, and that's why I started just being open about it. And I know, like... 
at the end of the day, when you take a photo, sometimes you look much better in person than you do in the photo. Like the photo never looks good. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, it's true. Like even when you look really cute, you don't look the same way in the photo. Like I guarantee you guys always look better in person than you do in the photo. And that's hard because like, you know, we see those photos of ourselves and we feel like that is who we are. And it's, it's really, really challenging. And back in the day, when it was like the celebrities who were taking photos, like it wasn't that big of a deal, but now we're all taking photos all the time, all the time. And so this is when it becomes a little bit of a challenge because, you know, me as an influencer, I'm, I'm you know, I, I have lots of tricks up my sleeves with, you know, makeup. And then I do play, you know, I dabble, um, you know, with different things. But then I also, fo it's like layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to the point where I didn't know who I was anymore. And that's why I felt like I'm just going to like break free and just be more honest about it. And truthfully, I didn't know where I was going. Like I didn't have an answer. Um, but I, it was really important for me to break free. Can I, can I say a little bit something else about this? Please do. Okay, if I'm not talking too much. That's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was a point where everything kind of changed. Um, we launched our skincare line, Wishful. And um, when we were launching it at the time, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of influencers, a lot of celebrities coming out with skincare. And, you know, I knew when we did the photo, shot, photo shoot, it was going to be, oh, you put on natural makeup during a skincare photo shoot, and then you do Photoshop and you sell the skincare. That's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, like, I just feel like this is a lie and I'm really internally bothered by this. And I remember, you know, speaking to my team um, who are here and I remember speaking to them and saying, okay, we're not gonna do the Photoshop, we're not gonna do the makeup, we're gonna do the photo shoot and this is gonna be it. Like, I was so proud of ourselves, I was proud of myself. I was like, I'm, I'm a badass, you know, like I'm so strong. Well, hold on, <laughs> before you start clapping. Um, I got on the photo shoot, I got onto the photo shoot and um, I remember feeling so just like absolutely like stuck. I, I, I saw the photos of myself and I was like, wait, I don't have the Photoshop, I don't have my makeup. Oh my God, like what do I do? You know, I can, I can pose, I, I mean, Tyra's here, she taught us all how to pose. Right? I watched every episode of America's Next Top Model, learn how to pose. But um, I got in front of the camera and I was like, I was stuck. And I remember be having a moment, I looked at the f first photo that the photographer took and I was like, looking at that woman, like myself, and I was like, she deserves to feel good. She deserves to feel accepted. She deserves to not have to feel trapped by all this stuff. And that was really like an absolute moment of change for me. Like since then, I've always been like, you know, we need to be more embracive, more accepting of ourselves. So do you still use Photoshop? For campaigns, we do not use Photoshop in some places. Like for instance, like if there's like the hair is blowing or there's background, we will Photoshop that, but we do not Photoshop skin. We don't make people thinner. We don't change their face shape. We don't touch, like for instance, if the, like the eyeshadow is not popping because of whatever lighting, we have to take the shot again. So we do not touch whatever is on the model. And if we do, we, we, we talk about it. We say, this has been Photoshopped. It's been really important that we are transparent within that. And um, I think it's different for myself as a person versus like, you know, just being an influencer. Cause I'm, I mean like, you know, I'm not a model. I, I'm a person of influence. I need to talk about this stuff. So that's been really important to like be very clear about what we're doing. Do you think that the industry is shifting more towards filters, editing, Photoshop, or more towards what you're doing? Do you feel like you're kind of on an island with it? Sometimes I do feel like I'm on an island, I'm on an island by myself, um, but I do see change too. I see it happening. It's just not happening as fast as it should. And um, it's, I think it's a, it's a hard thing to do, you know, cause like even on the way over here, I was taking, I was trying to take a video, like I'm on the way to Forbes and the lighting, I was like, oh. <laughs> Who is that person? Oh, I'm cute. What is that? And so I feel like, you know, I feel like there's also so many things that go into, you know, taking your own photo, feeling good. And I think there's always going to be moments where you're going to want to use a filter. So I don't think, it, you know, it's, it's complex. It's complicated. Yeah. But like we have to be able to at least have the conversation, to talk about it, to accept ourselves, to feel like comfortable with all this because that's part of the problem. Nobody's talking about it. And so I do think there's change happening. It's just not happening at the rate that... You know, maybe it should. 
Yes. Well, hopefully we'll see. I mean, something I've been talking about with a lot of women at this summit is at once there's this pull towards natural beauty, be yourself, don't wear makeup. And then there's also the like high key glam, you know, high key <laughs> everything. Um, <laughs> What and you started a line that is um, a no makeup makeup line called Glowish. Can you talk a little bit about your stance on why you? St I mean, we're talking a lot about contradictions and contradictions in beauty. Why did you start a no makeup makeup line? Total contradiction yeah. to beauty. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, during COVID, actually, and I don't know if everyone felt like this in the audience, but during COVID. I went through a period, and Alex, you have to tell me if this happened to you, where I was like, no, I took off all my fake nails, like I, you know, like left my hair all natural, I stopped wearing makeup, and I felt like, yeah, I don't need that stuff, look at me, I'm natural, and then I got really depressed, Yeah, because I, <laughs> I like looking good, I like like taking care of myself, not that the natural me is not good, but I, I like to take care of myself, I like to, th that time is not bad, bad time. Um, and so I kind of had to re-fall in love with makeup during, like, when we, when we started to get out of COVID, I was like, I need to fall in love with makeup over again. Like, this has become a thing for the outside world. I have to take a picture every time I get glam and post it on, the Insta on Instagram. It's never about me putting makeup on for me, so I had to like, re-fall in love with it. And I think through that period, I found that there is different avenues to me. Like, I don't only just love full glam. I mean, I love full glam. Right. I want to be clear, I love full glam very much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that. But, um, but I definitely found a side of myself loving a more natural glam and um, with good ingredients, because that's I didn't want to put makeup on on an everyday basis if it didn't have good ingredients. So I think just like that, I found like, I'm not this one dimensional person and none of us are. We have so many different parts of who we are we might want to get really extra and glam one day we might want to be more natural and that's like that's who we are we're not one type of person we're also like whisper like multifaceted totally um so I want to switch gears here and talk about where we are um you've been living in Dubai for how many years now 14 years 14 years exactly how do you feel that the climate for female entrepreneurs in the Middle East has changed from when you got your start? And how do you feel it is now? I mean, I definitely feel like entrepreneurship in general has grown tremendously, and especially for women. Um, you know, the women in the Middle East, you know, I'm really, really proud of them. They are so incredible, so hardworking. And, uh, you know, I think they're kind of outshining the guys right now, if I'm being honest with you. Um, they are very hungry <laughs> for success and to prove themselves. And, um, you know, there's a bit of a community around this, too, which I think is amazing. They really support each other, and I think that's wonderful. Um, I don't necessarily know if I saw that so much when I arrived. I think it was there, but I don't know if they were, they were communities. I don't know if there was, like, support for each other, um, and I definitely see that now. I see there's a lot of um, women supporting women. I think social has helped it tremendously. You know, like, I mean, you know, Instagram wasn't here or wasn't, you know, a thing before I moved here. And now it's become like a huge thing. People here love social media. So I definitely think that's been an opportunity um, for women here, too. They're very socially savvy, too. Awesome. Well, I mean, that's great to hear. And you're obviously the queen of social savviness. <laughs> um, speaking of, in the past, you've said that you are not interested in being acquired. I want to talk a little bit about your future. Um, you said you didn't want to be part of a beauty conglomerate. Has that changed? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? I was not expecting you to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I have a lot of stories. Story time. Um, I, I feel that um, an acquisition for Huda Beauty would be a tough thing for me. As um, I, I don't know if you, do, if, if you guys know this about me, if you guys can tell, but as a person, I'm a rebel. So I don't like people telling me what to do. You know, I don't like having to have to listen to the rules and to have to abide by certain things. So I, I feel like that would just be a disaster for a conglomerate to come and acquire her to beat. I feel like they would be like, oh, we're selling her as soon as we buy it. Um, so actually, uh, you know, a, a woman who I, I, I met not too long ago was talking to me about, you know, the opportunity for us as a brand to be, um, to go public. And they were like, oh, you know, you guys could go public. It could be so amazing. It could be great. And then they said something to me that really pissed me off. They were like, oh, all the women who support Huda Beauty, they can tell their husbands to go buy stock. Oh, God. 
<laughs> I was immediately offended. I was so offended. And I was just like, wait, what? So we as women, we're, we're trying to prove, we're, we're fighting for equality on so many levels, but we are not actually playing with our own money. We're not, we're not doing those things. And I, for myself, that was actually the case. Like I would actually go to my husband and tell him to do things. I would go to like, you know, my uh, financial advisor and I would tell him to do things and I would never do them myself. And I was like, wait a second, we're starting right here. I am going to become more financial literate. I mean, I have a finance degree, but I'm going to be a person who is, you know, trying to push women towards that too. So, I mean, I would love to go maybe the public route. I don't have a full plan, if I'm being honest. I mean, I don't doing, know yet. you're doing quite well so far. So <laughs> I think you're, whatever plan you're following is working really well for you. Yeah, I would like to do something with my community. I definitely know that. Like, whatever we end up doing, I want it to be something that benefits my community. Right. So on community, Huda Beauty is a family brand. Yeah. And you have a daughter now. I'm, we're almost out of time. So in closing, what are you teaching your daughter about success and what it's like to be a woman in charge? You know, um, success, I think, I think the, the thought of success is changing. You know, it used to be outward value and now it's really become inward value. And so that's something that I'm trying to teach my daughter, how it really does come from, you know, certain levels of happiness and, and just being connected to yourself. Um, I mean, I try to teach her those values and, you know, she's a very highly in tune, highly emotionally intelligent child. Um, she's, she's incredible, but you know, she, she goes through different periods where she's like, sometimes she's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to take over. When are we changing the name? When are we changing it to Nor Beauty? Like, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, mom. Let me take over. And then there are moments where she's like, you know, I just want to be a free spirit. So, you know, I think, I think that I would like her to be a combination of all of those things, you know, to be like fully appreciating herself, understand when she is working hard, why she's working hard. So many of us, and I, and I experienced this myself, I was working to prove outward value. I didn't feel good enough and I wanted people to recognize that I was good enough, but I never accepted that myself. And so, you know, when I did all the work, there was a lot. Yeah. A lot of tears. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of deep work. I, um, I actually feel like now I come from a place that's so much stronger and I want her to, to have that too. Well, that is really inspiring. Thank you so much, Huda. Thank you.